nutrition, and physical activity. Guidelines for forming a healthy eating pattern. The dietary guidelines provide recommendations for forming healthy eating patterns that will promote health, reduce risk of chronic disease, and meet nutritional needs. It recommends nutrient-dense foods. The reason is because this provides vitamins and minerals and other health-promoting components. It means also having little or no saturated fats, little or no added sugars, and little or no sodium. Commonly, these things are found in highly processed foods, junk foods. The idea that big things come in small packages is certainly true of blueberries. This tiny fruit is filled with healthy stuff and is an excellent example of a nutrient-dense food. Nutrient-dense food is looking at a quantity of food and kind of the value of the nutrition you might get from eating it. Mayo Clinic dietitian Kate Saratsky says nutrient-dense foods pack a healthy punch, delivering nutrients like fiber, vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants. The next question is going to be, well, how much of that do I want to include in my diet? When you're talking about fruits and vegetables, the answer is a lot. Not only are they nutrient dense, but they're low in calories. Still very nutritious, but it allows you to eat a larger quantity. Be aware though, some nutrient dense foods like fish, nuts, and seeds are higher in calories. And so we'll want to be more cautious about our portions of those foods. For the Mayo Clinic News Network, I'm Jeff Olson. To help put the dietary guidelines into practice, you can use the MyPlate food guidance system. This shows you the proportion of different foods that you should eat in a meal. Mostly vegetables and grains, smaller amounts of fruits, proteins, and dairy. Sometimes it's hard to know what to eat to be healthy. My plate is a simple guide to help us out. Notice the five food groups, fruits, vegetables, proteins, grains, and dairy. Our plate at home should look similar to the My Plate guide. Notice how half the plate is full of fruits and vegetables. A smaller portion contains protein, like lean meat or fish. There's also grains, like whole grain bread or pasta, and dairy, like milk, yogurt, or cheese. Follow the My Plate guide. Fruits offer up a good source of fiber, vitamins, and minerals. Grains give you carbohydrates, vitamins, minerals, and some amino acids. Vegetables are important sources of nutrients and vitamins. They are very, very nutrient dense. Dairy products are great sources of calcium, potassium, proteins, and sometimes vitamin E D when it's added. Protein foods include vitamins, minerals, and fats. If your protein comes from plant matter, like soy products or nuts and seeds, or peas and beans, then they will also have fiber. Malnutrition results from not eating the right amounts of nutrients. You don't have enough of anything. Undernutrition is not taking enough nutrients in for health and growth. So you're not getting certain nutrients in enough amounts. Overnutrition is consuming too much of certain nutrients or too many foods with high amounts of added sugar, solid fats, sodium, refined grains, or calories. You're getting too many carbohydrates, too much protein, too much fats, too much salt. Nutrients are components in food that the body needs to grow and maintain healthy function. Basically, the body needs nutrients to survive. There are six classifications of nutrients. Carbohydrates, which are mainly energy for cellular function. Proteins, whose primary function is to grow and maintain tissue and build other important chemicals in the body. Fats, which provide energy and protection. Vitamins, which contribute to important functions in the body. Minerals, which also contribute to bodily functions. And water, which makes up about 60% of body weight. It's important to recognize that all six nutrients are important for healthy function, with nutrient balance being the key. A great strategy to finding nutrient balance is to eat a wide variety of foods and avoid eating the same foods every day. Consuming fruits, veggies, and other nutrient-dense foods can help accomplish this. Nutrient-dense foods are often defined as foods that provide a lot of nutrients while not containing a high calorie count. So let's look at an example. Say you are craving something sweet. Option one is a glazed donut, which contains 190 calories and provides 8% of the RDI for vitamin C and a small amount of calcium and iron. 
Option two is a cup of raspberries, which provides 64 calories and is high in vitamin C, manganese, vitamin K, and copper. Raspberries also contain smaller amounts of many other vitamins and minerals, and they're loaded with antioxidants, phytonutrients, and 8 grams of fiber, which helps with digestion. As you can see, far less calories and many more nutrients, which equals a much healthier option. And that is the basics on nutrients. If you want to establish skills for a healthy eating pattern, you first have to make good, healthy food choices. This means choosing nutrient-dense foods like fruits and vegetables and lean meats and other proteins like nuts, seeds, or peas or eggs. Limit the amount of added sugars you use and saturated fats and sodium. So try to avoid processed foods whenever possible. Eat breakfast every day. Skipping meals messes with your, with your metabolism and establishes unhealthy eating patterns. Read the food labels on the back of your packages so that you understand when you have too much fat, too much sodium, or not enough of other nutrients. Think about calories. You need energy, but not too much energy. Eat healthy meals when you're away from home. The whole world is trying to sell you good tasting junk food and it might be good tasting, but it, if it isn't healthy for you, you shouldn't have too much of it. Analyze the influences on your food choices. Are you choosing certain foods because your friends eat them? Because commercials make you want them? Because that's what's available closest to you? Prepare nutritious foods. Make healthy foods at home and eat those. Practice food safety. Make sure that your food is not spoiled and that it's kept in proper temperatures. Making healthier food choices is going to involve eating more fruits and vegetables, especially whole fruits and vegetables. If given the option, make sure that you eat the original plant or animal instead of some processed version that only extracts certain parts of that food. If you're given the option of apple juice or applesauce or an apple, just eat the apple. Make sure that you consume whole grains whenever you can. And avoid empty calories. You don't need energy without the micronutrients. True or false? A food that's high in protein and added sugars is nutrient dense. The answer is false. If it doesn't have lots of vitamins and minerals as well, then it may not be nutrient dense. What are the five My Plate food groups? The five My Plate food groups include fruits, vegetables, grains, protein, and dairy. People who experience blank take in too few nutrients for health and growth. The answer is undernutrition. Your healthy weight range can depend on your age, your height, your sex, and your body composition. Body composition is the ratio of various components, fat, bone, muscle, that make up your body. Factors that influence body composition include genetics, the amount of body fat, where it is located, how much or how easily you're able to gain fat or lose fat. Eating patterns, what you eat, how you eat and when you eat, and physical activity. Are you active? Are you not active? Are you active only sometimes? Body mass index is a tool that doctors use to assess your individual weight status. It's based on your weight, your height, your age, and your sex. If you are overweight, that means for your height you have excessive body weight. If your excess body fat is the reason why you're overweight, or if you are overweight by a lot, this is called obesity. If a person has a body weight that is too low compared to others of the same age, sex, and height, they are considered underweight. If you're going to try to change your weight, either gain weight or lose weight, or just maintain a healthy weight, then there are certain strategies you want to employ. Avoid unhealthy strategies such as fad diets, 
Conventional wisdom about diets, including government health recommendations, seems to change all the time. And yet ads routinely come about claiming to have the answer about what we should eat. So how do we distinguish what's actually healthy from what advertisers just want us to believe is good for us? Marketing takes advantage of the desire to drop weight fast and be stronger, slimmer, and brighter. And in the big picture, diet plans promising dramatic results, known as fad diets, are just what they seem. Too good to be true. So where do diet fads even come from? While the ancient Greeks and Romans rallied behind large-scale health regimens centuries earlier, this phenomenon began in earnest in the Victorian era with crazes like the vinegar diet and the banting diet. Since then, diets have advised us all sorts of things. To excessively chew, to not chew at all, to swallow a grapefruit per meal, nonstop cabbage soup, even consumption of arsenic, or tapeworms. If the idea of diet crazes has withstood history, could this mean that they work? In the short term, the answer is often yes. Low-carbohydrate plans, like the popular Atkins or South Beach diets, have an initial diuretic effect. Sodium is lost until the body can balance itself out, and temporary fluid weight loss may occur. With other high-protein diets, you might lose weight at first since by restricting your food choices, you are dropping your overall calorie intake. But your body then lowers its metabolic rate to adjust to the shift, lessening the diet's effect over time and resulting in a quick reversal if the diet is abandoned. So while these diets may be alluring early on, they don't guarantee long-term benefits for your health and weight. A few simple guidelines, though, can help differentiate between a diet that is beneficial in maintaining long-term health and one that only offers temporary weight changes. Here's the first tip-off. If a diet focuses on intensely cutting back calories or on cutting out entire food groups like fat, sugar, or carbohydrates, chances are it's a fad diet. And another red flag is ritual. When the diet in question instructs you to only eat specific foods, prescribed combinations, or to opt for particular food substitutes like drinks, bars, or powders. The truth is, shedding pounds in the long run simply doesn't have a quick-fix solution. Not all diet crazes tout weight loss. What about claims of superfoods, cleanses, and other body-boosting solutions? Marketing emphasizes the allure of products associated with ancient and remote cultures to create a sense of mysticism for consumers. While so-called superfoods like blueberries or acai do add a powerful punch of nutrients, their super-transformative qualities are largely exaggeration. They are healthy additions to a balanced diet, yet often they're marketed as part of sugary drinks or cereals, in which case the negative properties outweigh the benefits. Cleanses, too, may be great in moderation, since they can assist with jump-starting weight loss and can increase the number of fresh fruits and vegetables consumed daily. Scientifically speaking, though, they've not yet been shown to have either a long-term benefit or to detox the body any better than the natural mechanisms already in place. Everywhere we look, we're offered solutions to how we can look better, feel fitter, and generally get ahead. Food is no exception. But advice on what we should eat is best left to the doctors and nutritionists who are aware of our individual circumstances. Diets and food fads aren't inherently wrong. Circumstantially, they might even be right. Just not for everyone, all of the time. Remember, if you want to change your habits, the best way to do it is to change them gradually over time. Radical shifts, multiple radical shifts, all at once, are a recipe for failure. Question. Your body composition is the ratio of fat, bone, and blank. It's muscle. One of the most common health conditions associated with obesity is blank. The answer is type 2 diabetes.